Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel where I share all things natural dyes and share natural dye tutorials with you. Today I'm going to be sharing an ancient Japanese flower and leaf pounding technique with you called Tadakizome otherwise known as hapazome, and I might be pronouncing that incorrectly. It could be zome, I've heard it pronounced both ways, so if you do know the right way to say that, please share in the comments below. This is one of my favorite techniques for transferring color from leaves and flowers onto fiber. It's similar to eco printing and bundle dyeing because you're getting that direct transfer of color but it's also awesome because you're using no water in the actual dye process. The only water that you're using is in the pretreatment and the rinsing. So it's very water friendly and very eco friendly. So if you're looking to add an extra layer of sustainability to your dye practice, this is a great technique for you to try out. It's also one that's so much fun to do with kids. And if you're doing this technique with kids, you can make stencils and lay petals and leaves in the stencils. And it's always so magical and rewarding for kids or adults to see that color transferring from the plant onto the fabric. So I wanna show a quick example with you. This is just a pair of baby pants that I haven't finished making yet, but that I used this method on to transfer color from some sulfur cosmos onto fabric. I also have another example to show you. So. When you're working with full flowers, you could these sometimes get these blurrier prints. So I'll show you an option if you're wanting to have clearer prints, you can take the petals off and I'll show you that in just a second. And then leaves also work beautifully. Not all leaves will work well, not all leaves are color fast. And there is some leaves that work well for ego printing that will also work well for this technique and I'll add a list of those in the description below. But this was a maple leaf. And as you can see, maple leaves work really well. So today I'm going to be using some flowers I picked from my garden as well as some that came in my Mother's Day bouquet and some indigo leaves, which I'm gonna go pick fresh because you wanna use those very quickly after you pick them. So I'm gonna be using some Sulphur Cosmos from my garden as well as some Bachelor Buttons and some Maple Leaves. And this dill came in my Mother's Day bouquet and the Sweet William also came in my Mother's Day bouquet. So as far as color fastness goes, the fiber is only gonna be as color fast as the dye plant that you used. So for instance, I know that the Sweet William and the Bachelor Buttons are anthocyanin and heavy, and those are not gonna be very color fast. Whereas the Sulphur Cosmos are going to be very color fast, Miracles are going to be color fast, and all of the dye flowers that you know to be color fast will be color fast in this technique as well, as long as your fiber is properly pre-treated. I will be posting resource links in the description box if you'd like to learn more about pre-treating your fiber before doing this technique. So for this technique, you're going to need pre-treated fiber like we just talked about. I'm gonna be using a cotton and a bamboo silk. You're gonna to want to use a natural fiber, so anything made from a plant or an animal protein, um, synthetic fibers aren't going to take well to this just like other natural dyes. You're going to want a hammer or a rubber mallet. I actually like to use both when I'm doing this technique, and I'll share more about that as we're doing it. I like to hammer onto a self-healing mat, but if you don't have one of these, that's totally okay. You can hammer onto a piece of wood. You're just gonna want a smooth, flat surface. So, so a piece of flat plywood or a cutting board will work very well. And then you're gonna want the plants that you're going to be hammering. And that's really it. It's simple, it's fun, it's magical. So let's get started. So to start, you're going to lay your fiber flat. And you can either do this with one piece of fiber or if you want to make two, if you want. And you can either do this with one piece of fiber or two. And so I will just be folding mine over on top of the flowers to make a sandwich, but I could also use this other piece. And that way I'm not getting near prints. So that's also an option. And so you're just going to lay your flowers or your leaves down on your fiber. 
and cover with another piece of fiber by either folding the fiber over, like I said, or laying another piece on top and pound. It takes a little bit of practice figuring out how hard to pound. And so I like to start pounding with my metal hammer to really get the colors moving. And then I like to finish with my rubber mallet because it's nice and flat and I feel like it gives a more even result. And so I mentioned earlier about using flowers. So if you use this whole flower head, and even though sulfur flowers are a pretty flat flower, you're gonna have a lot of bulk here, a lot of juice here. Um, it's gonna give you a more blurred look. And so the other option is to just pluck off the petals and arrange them like a flower and then hit the petals, and that'll give you a much cleaner flower looking print. So it's up to you. Both are really pretty. Uh, I'll show you what both look like. And something else to consider is laying out your flowers, they're gonna shift a little bit when you're hammering. So if you wanna make a mandala or something that's very precise, it can be beneficial to lay them out one at a time. So go ahead and lay one flower down, fold your fabric over or put your piece on top, and then hammer, and then add another and just go do one at a time as you go. Instead of trying to lay out your whole beautiful intricate design and having them shift around when you hit the fiber. Some, you will see some people using tape to tape their flowers and leaves down to keep them in place, but I find this to be a more eco-friendly way, and so I'm not going to be using any tape in this tutorial today. So I actually really like to use to do the one flower at a time method. I don't really like my flowers to shift around, so that's what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm just gonna fold this over. And I'll use my hand to just hold the flower as taut as possible, and my hammer to start pounding. So I'm going to bring you overhead for the rest of this so you can just see how the color transfers onto the fiber.
So at this point, you are finished. Uh, let's take a closer look at the results. So you can see, here is where I did the whole Cosmo flower. And it's a bit blurrier and messier. And on this flower and this flower, I just arranged the petals. And so you can see you get a much cleaner print. And you can really start to see the blue of the indigo coming through on those leaf prints which is always so fun to watch. And the younger the leaf, the more turquoise the blue is going to be. So at this point, you can just let these dry and then you can use a stiff brush to remove all of the plant material or brush it off with your fingers. And then I'd like to use an iron and iron mine on a hot setting, depending on the fabric that you use. So if you use silk, of course, you're gonna to wanna to use a lower heat. Cotton and bamboo silk can take a pretty high heat setting and that just helps them set. But like I said before, these fabrics were scoured and mordanted, so the dyes from the flowers are binding on to the mordants in the fiber, and uh, the heat just is like a little extra help for it to set. If you do this on an unmordanted piece of fiber, you're most likely going to lose most of your color in the first wash, so it's really important to do this on a mordanted piece of fiber. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching and following along. If you like this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments below, or hop on over to my Instagram and you can reach me there as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day.